This is the Kasori drink warmer. I did a video on it before. Obviously you can see that it has been pretty well used over the last several months. A quick summary of what it does. It heats up drinks, it doesn't boil water or liquid or anything like that, but it's a 24 watt heater. And my guess is, as I said in the video review, is that it likely has a, a thin film heating element underneath it. So let's, let's get to it. I'm hoping I can put this back together again and it does still work because I like it and I use it a lot. My guess is it's gonna be Philips. Place our bets right now. There are, on the back, two Philips head screws there. I'm guessing there's probably, like always, more hidden underneath these feet. No, there are not. They're just plugs. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Oh, some of them do have screws, but they're not adhesive. They're actually just a little plug that fits into a, ho a hole there. That's nice. That way you don't wear the adhesive out if you ever have to take this thing apart, which I don't think you'd need to. But you know, something broke and you wanted to keep using it. It's nice to be able to easily get at certain parts of it and be able to put those things back together without breaking or degrading or having to find new adhesive feet. Though they're not that, not that expensive. Anyways, uh, I pulled on it after I took the first two screws out. I didn't do anything, so I'm, I'm guessing it's all four screws are needed to come out here. And I can see already that it's separating from the stainless steel housing. These are separate screws. These are like machine screws that are going in the top here. And then these are like self-tappers that are down here. So I'll put those over there. Interesting that they did this two different types of screws. I wonder why. Uh, might require a little bit of prying, so let me get some pry tools. I think I, oh, well, don't need that. We'll keep it on standby just in case, but it's just it's come loose. So that's the back panel off. It's got some nice molded piece there. Lots of added bracing to give this good rigidity. Put this off to the side and let's take a peek right inside here and see what we've got. We have a 12 volt barrel jack coming in here and it runs down to V in plus and minus. And then it looks like it goes across a couple of smoothing capacitors. They're kind of jammed in there. That's not really, in fact, it looks like they pushed part of the case out or something here, this inner liner. <laughs> this is, this is less than optimal. They did at least cut out the board there so that there's air space around it so that these these electrolytic capacitors, they've got some airflow around them. I mean, there is a grill on the back here, so there is some air passing in and out because obviously you have a heat source that's just sitting right here. Looks like we got a little bit of a inductor here, so I'm wondering if there's a boost regulator somewhere. I'll have to see. I might plug this in and we might look at some voltages as this thing runs. But let's just walk through, we'll just keep going through kind of the overlay of things that are going on here. So we have the microcontroller here, a bunch of resistors, a couple of these are either FETs or transistors. And I'm wondering if that's just, I'd say it's switch inputs, but there's only three switch inputs. And those are capacitive touch. Silicon wrapped wire here that is crimped together. 200 degrees C wire. That's interesting. It's not a it's not a thermal cutout or anything. It's just I'm wondering if this was intended for a thermal cutout, and then they just like went, no, we don't need that, and just put it over here because <laughs> it's only it's 24 volts. It's possible for it to go into thermal runaway if there's nothing sitting on top of this, and it just to get really really hot. It is possible, but I'm wondering if that's just something that they decided to cost optimize and remove or. Maybe this is for that feature where it detected if the mug was on the surface or not on the surface and it would turn itself off and on depending on if there was a, a mug on the surface. Maybe that's what this is for. It's just not populated on here. There's another model that does have it and this is not one of those. So it's just, you know, for simplicity's sake, they just removed that part and just crimped together those two wires. So let's take out these four screws. Again, these are these are actually machine screws. And it looks like it goes into some kind of, it's plastic on this side, but it's going into something metal on the other side, which is, oh, the top case, I guess, is metal. But there's this. So I don't know what, I'm curious to know what that actually is as part of the whole system. Is it pressed in there? Yeah, that one's kind of a little bit over tightened. Well, I feel it coming loose now. 
Yeah, I was curious if it was like this whole assembly was pushed into that op like an open. Maybe not. It felt like it was coming loose for a second there. Hmm. Maybe this needs to come out first. Get that out of the way. No, that's all molded. Oh, this is molded all the way down. And I think I might need to release the circuit board, release these two points here, and then this whole thing might come out. Releasing the circuit board that is using self tappers again. So these four. Kind of surprised by how many screws are being used here. So there's that one and a, another one that's a different screw again than the. That's so weird. It's like they decided, like, oh, that's that's springy. As soon as I released that, it popped down there. But you can see that there's this on one side of the circuit board, there's this screw, and on the other side of the circuit board, you got this tiny, tiny little screw. Kind of strange. I'm sure they had their reasons. Okay, the circuit board seems to be loose now, but it's being held down by something. I think it's these springs that are for the capacitive touch. So why aren't they popping loose? That's definitely adhesived. So I would expect, I hope they don't pull off the circuit board, that they will release themselves. Just a little bit of, oh wow, that's what all those resistors are for. Hang on, there we go. Just gently get all these springs out. This is an interesting find, and you'll see it in a second. I thought they were using a seven segment display for the temperature and all of the other functionality. They are not. You can see the light guides. Hang on a second, let me get this a little bit out of the way, but not to the full reveal just yet. But you can see the light guides down there. And I was like, that's interesting. Why would you need that if it was a seven segment display? It's because it's not a segment segment display. It's a bunch of discrete LEDs. That's crazy. Pretty neat. But crazy because you got to do a lot of, that's a lot of drive lines. Oh, I'm wondering if they're multiplexing it too because there's definitely more LEDs and there are lines here. I think it's 16, but two are not being used for it. So 14 pins. And each one of these is going to be seven segments. So seven by four is 28 plus the two indicators and the decimal. So I think you, yeah, they got some multiplexing going on here. And I'm wondering if these, these are just shifting. These allow it to shift between what segment it's illuminating. So you turn it, turn on that segment, you illuminate it, go to the next segment, illuminate it. So you're, if I were to run this in sl probably in slow motion, you know, might be able to see it obviously strobing through the, the four segments. So that would count for seven. And I counted 14. So maybe they could be able to do two segments at a time and then maybe they reserve a couple of them for the the decimal and like the, oh, I guess it's Celsius and Fahrenheit. So this might just be one or the other. So there might be some clever bits going on. I'd have to play around with that more to see what, what's going on. Here's our springy bits for the capacitive touch buttons. And that is an adhesive on this side. So it helps them stay affixed to the to this top side of the, the user interface. It's pretty well designed. I'm quite impressed. I mean, it's it's got a lot going on. On the back side here is the driver circuitry to drive the beeper, which is on this side, which has a cover on it. <laughs> Thank goodness. If I took that cover off, it'd probably be way louder. But uh, it's got a little cover on it. Now let's take off the, oh, one of the wires came off. That sucks. Well, let's take the rest of us apart. Hopefully this will go back together and work. Just as I was saying how well it was <laughs> made, I guess I was flipping that board back and forth quite a bit. I can see where it solders down to onto the film. That's another machine screw. I'm putting these all in random places, but they're at least they're together, so I'll be able to figure out which screw I can jam in there and what screw I cannot jam in there. Are those both the same size? They are both. Okay. So now I have all the screws out of this plastic inner assembly. So there's the whole assembly. I pull this out. How is this held together? Okay, it just that's the whole thing. So there's just this metal. That's kind of what I thought. 
It's just this stainless steel frame with a circle cut out here, which is a nice piece of stainless steel. They got the welded bosses on here for the screws. So it's the four screws holding this whole plastic assembly in there. Okay, I just thought, what if I just press on the middle here? And I did, and then it's, it came off. So now we can see in closer detail <laughs> if this thing ever works again. <laughs> What's going on? Yes, exactly what I thought it was. Beautiful. So there's a plate here, an aluminum plate. That's like a heat spreader. It's got a nonstick surface sort of thing going on here. And there is that beautiful heating film. Just traces running through there and low resistance, and then it's got pet film tape on the on both sides. And uh, I thought it would run out a little further to the edges here, but it, that's, you know, that's, it's good enough. It does what it's supposed to do, but it really is concentrated around the inner circle here. So this is a, a neat little assembly. They've got some interesting stuff going on here. They're really concerned about this thing getting too hot because this is rubber, this material here around the outside. The whole thing is rubber. It looks like there's two thermal cutouts. There's two thermal cutouts and then a th thermal fuse, I think. I think that's what it is. I just want to see if we can have a peek at what these protective elements are that are sitting underneath. I think it's as far as I'll go with this. I'll take the tape off and I'll pull gently <laughs> the heating elements off of here because it's pretty easy to get it back on again. Look at that. So you have these two thermal, uh, these are probably just bimetals. This one's not marked. So I wonder if these two are different from one another. This one definitely is marked. Doesn't have a, oh, 120C. This one's marked 120C. It's not using any one of these three to cycle the heating element because it's using, it's using, oh, this might be a temperature sense. Sorry, I'm excited by all this stuff and I'm trying to figure it all out. Maybe this is a temperature sensor. Unless there is another sensor back here somewhere. No, I don't see a temperature sensor back here. I just see a thermal cutout. That's this thing here, 250 volt, 10 amp, 150 C. It's basically like one of these things, these C fuse thermal cutouts, but I think that it's just easier to get this in here. I'm almost positive, I'll, I'll double check that and of course correct myself if I'm way off. I'm wondering if this is a temperature sensor because this goes right back, these wires go back to the printed circuit board. They go here. They run off right to the microcontroller. They've got a, yeah. Let's see if it is. Let's get the voltmeter in. I'm just gonna go off of these two pins here. So we're looking for something that's not like open circuit, short circuit. Ta-da! It's not. That's the temperature sensor. And by comparison, I'll show you the thermal cutouts. Uh, they were sleeved really well, so I may not be able to get at it. This, oh, that's the thermal cutout. Oh, cool. Power comes in to the to one side of this 120 Celsius resettable cutout and then it comes out again and it goes into this 150 Celsius one shot and then goes out again and then this goes into the heating element and then and then returns back to the 12 volt rail. That is impressive. This is serious business here. I think I wonder if they make like a 120 volt version of this. Maybe that's why also they included this because it could cause a I mean you have more of a risk of fire. This could also honestly it has a, a risk of fire but it's in really good robust plastic and I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of robust material around it to protect it from that failure mode but it's nice that it has these two protect protections in there and then you have the temperature sensor there that we that we checked let's look at the cutout which should be i don't know if i can get to it well i should be able to go between you see what i'm doing yeah i'm going to the crimp to here Nah, it's super high impedance. Yeah. You gotta watch when you think you're getting something and you're actually not. It should be no, it should be it should be closed circuit, but I don't think I don't think we're gonna get that. It shouldn't be open circuit. 
yeah, there we go, 0.4 ohm, meaning the thermal, it's a little bouncy because of my hands moving on the solder joint. Whoops, let's try it again. Get a little stable, there we go. So this uh, is closed, beautiful. And then this one, you, you can, the legs are right there, so we can just go and put the probes right across the leg. And that's just, why is it showing overload? What? I don't think so. Oh, I wonder if there's like a coating. There is. There we go. 0.1 ohms. Beautiful. So our, both are, <laughs> I mean, it was working this morning when I <laughs> heated up my tea. These protectors are obviously working uh, as they should and are not in a fault state, which is nice. So there's two, I, I'm, I'm, that's amazing. Well, let's check the impedance of the, just the heating element itself. I'm just curious what the nominal impedance, this little maze of this material is. Why is this saying overload? Is it just the, it could be just be the solder. Overload, that doesn't make any sense. Unless I broke it completely. Well, that's not good. 70 mega ohm. No. Why is this not working? What happened? I wasn't really being very mean to it or anything. I wasn't stressing it that much. Let's try one more time. Five ohm, 5.7. The, the wiring near the, near, that's anywhere near the heaters is all silicon wrapped wire coming into the system here is all 200 degrees Celsius, 200 degrees Celsius here, 200 degrees Celsius going into the thermal cutout and the thermal fuse. The only, the only wire that's not is the wire going to the temperature sensor, which sort of makes sense because if things go bonkers, you want the high temperature wire cutting things out and not this probably, what is this, 105 maybe? I think it'd probably be higher than 105 because it can get hotter than 105. Does it have a rating on it? No, it does not, no markings. But I'd imagine it's sufficient for what it's being used for. And if it's not, it would short those pins. And I'd imagine we get pretty cranky machine pretty quickly. Cool. This was a surprise. The attention to detail on the build. I mean, it just, this was like, I forget what the price was. I always get the pricing wrong. I, th I think with the mug, it was like 40? Without the mug, it was like about maybe 30. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, if you liked this thing before, I don't know, it's, it's really, there's even more to like about it now, I feel. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Please like and subscribe, leave comments below, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.